Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is about Ivy Bridge or Intel's third generation of core series processors. So this is a slightly new architecture in that it's not that different from Sandy Bridge, but what it is is on a completely different manufacturing process. So a Sandy Bridge or second generation core series processor from Intel uses a 28 nanometer manufacturing process as well as providing PCI Express 2.0 onboard graphics and up to a quad core processor with hyper threading all on the same die. Now Ivy Bridge steps things up in a couple of big ways. So number one is it has shrunk to a 22 nanometer manufacturing process, which means at stock speeds, it outputs less heat and consumes less power. In fact, all Ivy Bridge CPUs at launch have 77 watt TDPs, even the high performance SKUs compared to the 95 watt TDPs of previous generation Sandy Bridge CPUs. It also adds a PCI Express 3.0 controller as well as some more robust options for the integrated memory controller in addition to having four hyper-threaded cores that are clocked higher than the last generation product. Now there are technology improvements and there are also performance improvements. At the same clock speeds and with the same feature set, Ivy Bridge will outperform Sandy Bridge, the last generation product, by about 10%. However, it's not necessarily as simple as just, well, you know, if last generation was a 2700K, then you just buy a 3700K. Intel has changed up the naming scheme in some ways, whereas retained it in other ways. So the two main focus SKUs for the gaming community, which is, I guess, what we're catering to mostly here, are the 3570K and the 3770K. The 3770 is an i7 and the 3570 is an i5. Okay, so let's go through the whole thing. Core i7 versus Core i5 means hyper-threading versus non-hyper-threading. So you've got four cores in here either way, but the Core i7 has four additional virtual cores, which will give you additional performance in video editing, 3D rendering, and heavily threaded applications like that. All right, the model number itself designates the clock speed. So the 3770 is actually clocked slightly higher than the 3570, although it is not by much. So for gamers who are playing lightly threaded but benefiting from a single high performance thread games, you're not gonna see too much of a benefit between switching between those two CPUs. The last important thing to remember is the K. So if you buy a K processor, it is easy to overclock, whereas if you buy a non-K processor, you are going to be much more limited in terms of the overclocking that you can do. Although it should be noted that if you wanna do any overclocking, you need to pair it up with a P67, provided that BIOS support is provided by your motherboard manufacturer, Z68, or a Z77 motherboard. The H77 and H67 will not overclock an Ivy Bridge CPU because it is not supported by the chipset. Of note to do with overclocking is the fact that with my 3770K sample, I was able to achieve 4.7 gigahertz stable with a Corsair H100. However, the H100 is a critical part of that. So yes, the overclocking process was dead simple. I didn't even have to overvolt it too much, but Ivy Bridge starts to kick out a fair amount of heat once you start overclocking. So make sure you've got adequate cooling. And remember guys, even if you don't reach quite the same clock speeds as you did on a Sandy Bridge CPU, you're still gonna get some additional performance due to the fact that Ivy Bridge performs about 10% better clock for clock. Now with Ivy Bridge, the third generation CPU, we have the perfect pair for a Z77 motherboard. Now Z68 motherboards will support these Ivy Bridge CPUs, but some of them are gonna be a little bit limited. This one right here does support PCI Express Gen 3, but it is missing support for Lucid Virtue MVP, which is an upgraded version of the software layer that allows you to use your dedicated graphics card for gaming and the integrated graphics chip on your CPU for things like video encoding, Intel QuickSync. So QuickSync is awesome because it basically allows you to quickly convert videos for viewing on your mobile device without using the actual CPU power itself. It is faster and it allows you to do other things on your computer while you're waiting for your videos to convert. Another feature that Ivy Bridge has that is an advantage over even one of the other current Intel platforms is uh, RST, or excuse me, SRT 
or smart response technology. Smart response technology allows you to use an SSD that is plugged into your, here, I'm gonna find a random Z77 board to pick up that is plugged into either a SATA port on your board or even an M SATA slot on the motherboard itself and use that to cache your hard drive for dramatically improved performance on your boot drive or even on a storage drive. Now I wanna wrap this up with just a bit of a look at the overall ecosystem now. So here I have a few examples of some Z77 and H77 boards. So actually I'm gonna start with the H77 board. This is a very basic board. So this is a top to bottom refresh from Intel that is gonna be based on this architecture once all of the CPUs are out. That means no matter whether you're configuring a basic system for office use or a gaming system, System, you're going to want an Ivy Bridge CPU for the power savings, for the performance increase, and for the latest technologies, including Intel provided USB 3 that is built right into the chipset now. So that's an H77 board. Remember, H77 boards don't support overclocking, so these are not for performance systems. Here I also have a couple of more high-performance motherboards. This is a Z77 board from Gigabyte. It has that M SATA feature, which is really cool, allowing you to cache your hard drive. It also supports up to three PCI Express 16X slots. However, you're going to be really maximized at 2x16X which is enough for two high-end graphics cards. You're not gonna wanna run three-way SLI or three-way crossfire on this platform. It just isn't really intended for it and it doesn't have enough PCI Express lanes with the exception of certain very high-end boards with high-end switching chips to manage the PCI Express lanes. Next, we've got, actually, this one's really cool. This is the Asus Sabertooth Z77, which has pretty much all of the latest features, including their thermal armor, as well as, you know, little dust covers, slot covers. It looks very high performance. It'll look great in your case and performs extremely well with Ivy Bridge. It also includes a bunch of other cool stuff, including customizable fan controls that you can control using their AI Suite software, which leaves X79 in a kind of an interesting place. I'll tell you guys this now, Z77 and LGA 1155, so this socket's been with us a little while, it's never going to get a six core processor. Six core and up processors are going to be reserved for the true enthusiast platform, X79. X79 doesn't have an Ivy Bridge architecture CPU yet. However, as long as your motherboard manufacturer supports it, there is the intention now to release an Ivy Bridge based CPU on LGA 2011, which is the socket for X79. X79 also has some other advantages, including many more PCI Express 3.0 lanes. So if you wanna run three-way SLI or four-way SLI or Crossfire, this is gonna be the platform to go with. X79 also supports dramatically more memory, up to four memory banks compared to, or excuse me, eight memory banks compared to four memory banks on LGA 1155. Now this next point is actually related to the retail box that an Ivy Bridge third generation processor comes in. Yours won't come in something like this, although uh, the one that we used for our testing did. It'll come in something that looks more like this, but with you know pictures and whatnot on it, because even though Ivy Bridge provides enthusiast grade performance, especially for gamers or people who don't need uh, a vast number of cores for multi-threaded applications, it is still a mainstream socket as well. So users, unlike LGA 2011, where the CPUs do not come with a heatsink, users are not necessarily expected to buy a high performance heatsink, although if they were overclocking, they better do that. So it comes in a box with a validated heatsink, and along those lines, yes, it is a mainstream socket too. That means not only does it support with dedicated graphics, with Crossfire and SLI, but it also has seriously amped up onboard graphics. The HD 4000 graphics on Ivy Bridge in our testing have provided significant improvement over the HD 3000 and HD 2000 graphics on the previous generation products, actually enabling even games like Crisis to be run at medium settings in 720p. Maybe it's not full HD, you know, all details turn to high gaming, but we're talking about onboard graphics that are built right into your CPU that cost you absolutely nothing extra, as long as you have a motherboard which supports the onboard graphics, which pretty much all of them, whether you're talking H77 or Z77, do. We're gonna wrap it up with just a size comparison. So this is still LGA 1155, which means an Ivy Bridge looks on the outside pretty much the same as a Sandy Bridge or even a Linfield. 
Now I'm just going to show you guys a quick size comparison with the previous generation high-end LGA1366 as well as the LGA2011 CPU. Why is that one so much bigger? Well, it has to hook up the quad channel memory controller which Ivy Bridge is only dealing with dual channel memory and there's potentially quite a few more cores under the hood compared to Ivy Bridge. So thank you for checking out this overview on NCIX Tech Tips. I hope it wasn't a little bit dry, but uh, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Totally forgot this guys, but Ivy Bridge HD 4000 graphics not only perform significantly better than previous generation solutions, they, it also provides up to three displays out simultaneously, which is great for business users. For example, on my desk, I use four displays. So instead of needing two graphics cards, I could just have an Ivy Bridge CPU and then one supplementary graphics card to do the fourth display. But most people don't use more than three. This board, for example, has dual DVI and display port out on the back of the board. Very cool stuff.